like there were bugs crawling over all over me darkness i felt total darkness they took her hands she took them over my head and she napped and i was crazy i went under the hashtag twerk god gave me a very scary dream now a, a demon started possessing me and i would feel like my eyelids would flutter and i couldn't control myself Hi family, so today's video is so exciting. All right, I'm here with my puppy Isaac. Um, you don't even know the story of how I got him, but I got him from a very abusive home <laughs> two hours away. I got him for free off Craigslist, and he was definitely a gift from God because I have so many stories of me and him together. But anyway, today's video is so special, so special, because I don't know if you know this, because this is a little surprise, but today's video is my 10,000 subscriber special video. Like honestly, I don't know how I got here. Well, I do know how I got here. It's only by God because God has sent this community here and we're all a family. So I want you guys to know that I'm not just a person on a screen, I'm your sister. And so I want it to feel like that way here. And so I, I don't know, I'm so excited. And so my husband helped me come up with this idea, but I wanted to think of ways that I could tell you kind of how I've gotten to where I am today. And I have a great story for you guys. And I was actually not gonna tell you guys this story now at least, but you know, I think that it's a great idea. And I think that God's just put it, maybe an idea on my heart to talk about it. So I'm just excited and I hope that you love today's video. So I'm actually gonna be filming from my kitchen table today. I love having a kitchen table. Um, it makes me think about one day when I do have a family. Well, I do have a little family now, but I mean when I have kids and having them at my table and just eating together as a family and it gets me really excited. You know, it's the little things sometimes. But anyway, so I'm going to be talking about something that I feel mm, a little bit hesitant about. It's about the time that I was in a cult. And so when I say cult, um, I'm just going to read a definition from Google real quick. It's a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. So the thing about this is I was in one and I'm not trying to tear down the people involved or the organization itself, I'm not going to give you that away in this video. That's not what this is about. Um, and so that's why I'm going to tell you about it in an informational kind of way and what I learned from it and what I'm so happy I got that experience for. Um, and one main thing that I took away from that, what God wanted to reveal to me through that. So I wasn't gonna get into all this background information on how it happened and how I joined and the things that happened, but if I'm gonna tell you about it, I might as well. So, um, long story short, I found out about this ministry through um, someone that I'm close to um, in my husband's family, it's his cousin. And so he told us about it, we went and visited it and I fell in love with it. I loved the atmosphere, I loved how it was people my age. I loved how it was people my age and people that just loved the Lord and wanted to serve him. And so that's actually something that's rare to find around where I was because I went to a secular um, university for undergraduate. And so, yeah, so that's where I found them. And so there would be these things where it would kind of be like you would enter it as a beginner or you would a newbie and it would look great on the outside and then as time went on um they got to know me they got to know my story i was finally ready to tell my testimony and so i think that the pastor really loved the fact that i had that testimony and he wanted to share it so there were times when i would go to into these underprivileged neighborhoods and he'd be like here go on this bench and you're gonna god told me you're gonna be preaching your testimony on top of this bench today or on this picnic table and i'm standing up in front of everyone at this cookout of people i don't know just like preaching the gospel preaching my my testimony out and it felt great it felt like maybe God was telling me this was my time this is what he wanted me to do I'm on my year off at this time before going to graduate school now I'm in a doctorate of clinical psychology but before this I didn't know what I was doing I hadn't even applied to graduate school yet but I did know that's what I wanted to do and so as time went on they got closer with me and they were like yeah we you know they started to it felt like they were initiating me into a higher up position i guess in their ministry so they would be like yeah we want you to um lead these groups and we want you to do this but then they would take me into meetings and these meetings would be like 
it would be different than what you see when you first join. And what they would do is they'd be like, hey, God's speaking to me and he's saying like, you need to speak in tongues. And I'm like, oh, really? Cause I mean, I don't know. He didn't tell me that. And then they're like, yeah, no, he's saying that right now. And um, he wants to heal your diabetes if you have enough faith. And they would say things like that to me. And um, I would start to believe them and think like, oh my goodness, God's talking through them. And then they'd be like, you know, God's saying that you're going to be here with us. Like, And I thought, oh, wow, maybe a new opportunity is coming up and I don't have to go to grad school or that's not um, in the plans anymore. And this is just coming up in my year off. And that's what God wants for me. And I was so excited. Now, in one of our first meetings, they would, the pastor started to prophesy over me. So what he would say is, all right, Rima, come here. And he would have everyone put their hands on me and um, they would all, all start speaking in tongues. So they would all start speaking in tongues. And when I say tongues, they're not using tongue, the tongues where you're speaking in a language of the native land. No, they're speaking in a tongues that just isn't a language at all. And today is not a tongues video, um, but the way they were using tongues was not in alignment with 1 Corinthians where Paul talks about how tongues should be used in the church. And I know that's a big controversy. That's not what today's video is about, but they were using it the wrong way. They were talking over me and I felt this feeling. And I remember that first prophecy and I felt like there were bugs crawling over all over me. I felt like I felt darkness. I felt total darkness. I did not feel peace. And it says in the Bible that God is a God of peace and not disorder or confusion. These meetings had no kind of, they were very disordered. They were very chaotic. They were very much, but I would start to feel this feeling of this high energy, just like, all over me and I would be like addicted to it. It felt like an energy. I, it was not the Holy Spirit, but at the time I'm like, oh wow, God's opening up this new Holy Spirit feeling. I'm like into this new level of like Holy Spirit consciousness. I don't know guys, it was not biblical at all. And the way it felt was not the Holy Spirit. Um, but so the first prophecy he had told over me was that I'm about to run a race. He saw a vision of me about to run a race and he said, and it stopped. And I wasn't able to run the race, but now God's giving me a second chance to run that race. And I'm like, I'm so confused after this, guys. I'm like, what does this mean? And I went to my friend that was discipling me, because you know, when you join, you have to be discipled. I'm like, what does this mean? And she's like, no, you'll find out one day. Like, it's not, you know, sometimes it's confusing. And I'm like, ah. when I finally brought up the fact that, you know, you know, this isn't right. This isn't right. They're like, um, they just totally, they, you know what they did? They prophesied over me again and said, God, God is saying to me right now that you are letting the enemy get to you and that everything that you thought you were going to do now is just going up, um, sweeping it under the rug and the devil's, there's a hole beneath you and the devil's throwing all your whole future into it. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. You know, and I started having these feelings about like, am I supposed to be here? Am I supposed to be here? And um, I don't know, I don't know. I'm so confused at this time because I'm in a vulnerable place in my life. And you know, these people love that. So I'm like, okay, I did a Daniel fast. I did a Daniel fast for probably a week, a week. And I have diabetes, so I can't do a full fast. I did a Daniel fast. And I did it on behalf of a girl in the, in the place. Um, me and this girl were friends. We did a Daniel fast on behalf of someone else because we felt like she was needed deliverance. And you know, some it says in the Bible, some um, demons can only be that can only come out with fasting and prayer. So we were like, all right, well, we will fast and pray for her. Um, and so I was on a Daniel fast, and right when the Daniel fast ended, God gave me a very scary dream. Now it was absolutely terrifying and basically the dream was a guy in the ministry looks at me and he says to me you know how a false holy spirit is coming through um when it's when your eyelids start to flutter and as he said that um uh a, a demon started possessing me in the dream but it wasn't a demon it uh, wasn't a demon that i had thought of it was a white space it was a white energy it was like this like like it was in the dream and it started taking over me and it was like a false holy spirit and um it hit me 
every time I encountered that electric feeling, my eyelids would flutter, my my face would, I would lose control. And you know, a fruit of the spirit is self-control, but in these moments when they would have these meetings and things and, and put their hands on me, I would feel like my eyelids would flutter and I couldn't control myself. That's not the Holy Spirit. So anyway, that is not the point of this video, okay? God intervened is what I wanted to say. So later on, I, I had left and nobody talked to me after it. They all cut off ties with me. They were done, you know, and it's and, and that hurt. That hurt a lot. But my point in this video is, okay, God had given me a warning in my dream. Get out, basically. And the so I had that dream, and then after that dream was the last his last attempt to keep me. He did another prophecy over me and said, you know, the devil's getting to you. And he said, everybody, everybody, come over here. And he said, and he told his wife to put her hands over my head. And she, they took her hands, she took them over my head, and she covered my ears. And she said, and he said, and I need you to drown out the voices of the enemy right now. Cover her ears and let the Lord speak. And then he's like, you know, and he starts saying, he says that God's coming through him and saying, when my, when I speak, my sheep hear my voice. And God, God actually spoke to me in that moment and said, look him in the eyes right now. I look him in the eyes and I see pure evil so then god speaks to me and he says yes you heard my voice and i said to leave so when he says my sheep hear my voice and god says back to me yeah you heard me now listen <laughs> and it's funny because god's using god is already like a million steps ahead of us as humans we're trying to get one over on him or on others and god is already like way ahead I thought that was, <laughs> that was great. That is so funny. That prophecy. This is, this is the part that is insane. That first prophecy where he said the race is about to start, that had real meaning. God revealed it to me months later. He said, that's what that meant. He used his false prophecy to be true and give it meaning in my life because that race, I, when I was 15 in ninth grade in high school, I actually, I don't know if you guys know what the app you now is. Um, it's basically like a live streaming app and I was crazy. I went under the hashtag twerk, not to twerk, to get views and to get people on it and to, until a point that I'd be like, oh, if I get like thousands of viewers, um, my mom and my brother and no, we'll all start twerking. And so like, thousands i would get thousands and thousands i actually became the number one user on the app and i started to get this platform where i would do like prank calls and i would do like crazy things and i started gaining like thousands of followers a day and i was like going crazy and i was turning into this person that had you know just that you know those kids on tiktok you know the ones that just like get the platform and then just go just do crazy things for attention that was totally me but it was only for a few weeks until the point that I was like, do I want this? And there was some force, something holding me back. And I said, I can't do this. Like they would, when I would get off live, live stream, they'd be like, Rima, 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 come back. I was like, I can't do this. Like I, can't, I literally can't do this. I was like, something told me not to. And I was like, I just, it's too much pressure. And so I'm realizing now that right after this whole thing happened is when God grew my ministry. God, God took me from like, I made this Instagram account. I have 40,000 followers on it now. Um, and now I have this YouTube where I am at 10,000 followers and it's all for the glory of God. And I don't even know what I would have done with that platform. And I praise God that I didn't taint anybody else because I would have just done some crazy horrible things or said some crazy horrible things. And the way I was living my life back then, I remember my stepdad would like give me dog food that looked like beef jerky and then take it to school and feed it to my friends. And I would just do anything he said. Like I would do the craziest, dumbest things. I And I was not a good influence at all. And so like, I don't, I can't imagine where that life would have led me. I can't imagine what life would be like if I kept that. And I'm so happy the Lord, it had to be the Lord's grace holding me back from that kind of life. And so I'm thinking about every single thing I've been through that led me to this position right now. And like, you know, the, it's funny how that prophecy came to be true. 
And it, uh, there's some scripture I wanted to share with you guys really quick about this idea that God really does turn everything around for his glory in the end and just turns it around to be what it was supposed to be. Like we think we can get one over on God, but really, really God's playing chess and we are just attempting to pay, play checkers. Honestly, he's so much ahead of us. We can't get one over on him or his people because God is going to prevail in every single way. So I want to read to you first Philippians um, chapter 1 verse 17 through 18. It says the former preached Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached, and because of that, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. And then Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 personally my favorite of all time It says you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives now I just can't express to you guys how thankful I truly truly am um, for this platform and for what God has given me and I don't take it lightly I really don't um if I just if I haven't even been in my word I don't want to be here. I want to I want to be transparent. I want to show you my real life. I want to show you who I really am. But I also want to have my relationship with God as the forefront of what I do to guide um, my ministry, to guide these videos, to guide everything. And, you know, the fact that I'm here today and that after all that I've been through, God has given me this wonderful, beautiful platform with you amazing people. I can't tell you how many comments have come at the perfect time that like pop up on my phone and I read them and I like, I almost start tearing up because there's some times when I'm going through it rough, you know, the enemy is at full force, but I see these messages guys and I, I honestly want to cry sometimes like I, it is so encouraging and even if I can't get back to all of them, I just want you to know like I am so thankful and I'm so blessed and I want to remain humble in this ministry and know that God has done it all and he will continue to do it but it's not my own strength it's not my own doing and it's all God's and um I just want to thank you guys so much for 10,000 on YouTube that is insane it's amazing and your support is doing so much for me and my my husband and my family and the furthering of this ministry every minute that you watch is helping and so it's supporting me and it's supporting God's word going to all of the nations so we can baptize in the holy name of the holy spirit and I'm trying to I'm trying to recite the great commission but I I'm I'm getting messed up here um <laughs> I, I love you guys so much. I hope that today's video you got something out of it and I hope that you are all having a blessed week. Um, yeah, and thank you for being here. My name is Rima Angelique. I'm also known as Faithful Expression on Instagram. If you guys need anything from me, I'm a DM and a comment away and I love you guys so much and I just pray that you all are amazing. All right, bye.